Welcome to Guitar Knobs, the guitars, gear, noise, and nonsense podcast hosted today by these knobs. Tony Dudzik, Pick Guardian. Mike Trombley, Red House Electronics. Hey, it's me, Todd Novak. Mike barely got Red House Electronics out of his mouth, and I jumped in. <laughs> but <laughs> see, I, I said it twice. Fine. How's everybody doing? We are super happy that you are with us. We are happy to be with us as well. Uh, we finally got Mike back in here. Um, I think he felt guilty. I kind of did. And made it back in, and we've got Tony. And what? What's that? I hear someone on the line. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's JJ Planets from the Netherlands uh, with a little bit of ocean noises coming at you. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah, JJ Tanis, uh, internet s- guitar superstar. Sensation. Sensation, reviewer extraordinaire, oh <laughs> demo artiste, etc. YouTube mega man. Amazing credentials. <laughs> wow. wow. Hey, are you well, going to be You're making me blush here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get anything. Can like he that. live up to the hype? That's yeah. the question. I, I think he can. That's the good thing. So, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with JJ, he has a very um, exciting and wonderful program on YouTube uh, where he's reviewing gear and he does so in a very. Um, I think I, the word I want to say is maybe open way. Approachable. Think, approachable. Thank you, Tony. For th- Tony the, th- the thesaurus. <laughs> yeah. He didn't last long in the mob with a name like that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Tony the thesaurus. <laughs> That's why they changed it to the chin. <laughs> Tony the chin. Yeah. Uh, funny. Anyways, um, back to JJ. That was really rude, Tony. <laughs> um, I apologize in advance to all of our Italian yeah, fans. To all use people All use there. guys out there. Yeah. Oh, boy. We're digging a hole. So, um, yeah, JJ, uh, aside from YouTube, does an awful lot of things in the guitar world, and we're going to get into that uh, as our main feature, the main event. But for right now, we need to take care of just a few things. Antoine? Yes. You know, if, if you guys out there like what we're doing, I mean, we all like it in here. We show up every, every week or so. And uh, we could just really use a little bit of help, if you would, could, by becoming a patron on patreon.com. Let's say for, the, for, for, for less than the cost of a good <laughs> end on a cable, debut or something, right? you can help keep this podcast moving forward. And, and if you're feeling a little more generous, uh, you can help us out at a higher level. You know, maybe for the cost of, a, of an entire cable, two ends, cable in between, mm. you, can, uh, you can get one of our super cool Guitar Knobs t-shirts. That's, Todd is wearing one right now. Yeah. Beautiful. Orange it's, and black. It's comfortable. And it, for this time of the year, coming up on it Halloween, fits well. it's not one orange of those and black. Crappy, boxy ones. It is very soft. It is nice. Gotta say that. So... If you'd like to help support us, me, right. um, go to patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs. We really do appreciate all of your support and your commentary and uh, look forward to having you become a patron on patreon.com. I feel like I'm on NPR now. That's beautiful. You know, uh, <laughs> Tony's start like starts out so crazy, but yeah, then it kind of just, just <laughs> it just kind of bottlenecks into like this yeah. fine tuned like. That's thing. where the camera follows him sitting into yeah. the the uh, tuck and roll cheddar leather leather <laughs> initially, uh, chair. When, initially, when you hear him, you're like, <laughs> "Oh, this is his <laughs> first time saying it." Yeah. But then towards the end, you're like, "Man, he's a professional." <laughs> it's like, wait, what? <laughs> this is the same guy. Yeah. Yeah, same guy. All right. No, you had your moment. Okay, my Thank 15 you, minutes Tony. are up. <laughs> All righty, everybody, let's get into what we did this week in our guitar worlds. Mike? All right, dude. So it's been a while since I've been back, and uh, I brought in the uh, Roland Go Mixer. You guys see it? And uh, what it is, is, I mean, it's only like, what well, is that like three by three or something like that? Three mm. inches by three inches? But... Um, what Maybe it four is? By four. I'm good. I'm going four by four. Four by four. All right. Yeah. yeah. Officials say four by four. And it's about so, an inch thick. Okay. <laughs> Always add an inch, right? Oh man. So, <laughs> um, so 
So what it is is it actually has five inputs, uh, two line inputs for like, you know, uh, line quarter inch, or I mean, eighth inch, and then it has a stereo input and then what two other it? ones. So what it is is it's a mixer for your phone, and uh, it's pretty dope. A mixer for my phone. What would I need that for? Um, you can do Facebook live videos. You can do, um, Instagram live videos. I actually kind of doodled around with it. Um, I think last week I, I did a live, I went Instagram live. So to be Red clear, House. since this isn't the, um, social network podcast, this yes. is for plugging your guitar or mic in to do maybe a demo or something. So essentially like, or maybe if you and a friends you and a couple friends get together mm -hmm. um and you want to do a jam or something you want to record it yep it has all the inputs that you can plug in and um and you can record it it records the audio like you can do a video on wow. your phone on your iphone or droid that's cool yeah it is it's and it sounds phenomenal yeah, maybe um, we should try it on here and see what happens maybe yeah it'll work exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah and um and what's so it's a hub yeah, a kind it's of an input and, hub. Well, what I really enjoy about it was one, it was a hundred dollars. That's not enjoyable at all. No, what are you talking no. About? So, and but the, here's the thing: is it's powered off your phone, so you don't need to use so any you don't external even get power. A free power cord with that? No, it's it's powered off. <laughs> it's it's powered <laughs> off your phone, so it pretty much you can take it anywhere. And if you want to do a podcast, you could take two microphones, your iPhone. And then you can actually, you know, just re yeah. record on your iPhone. Uh, we should and explore that. So it's very portable. So if you want to do a, a podcast in a restaurant. Or like an event that we may be going to on October 15th exactly. in Chicago. Oh. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So if we want to do like all of a sudden, you know, we're like, hey, let's do a guitar and podcast. podcast. Um, we can just pretty much set up wherever our iPhone is. <laughs> so oh. so have it's to, pretty You nice. have to bring that to Chicago. Exactly. Just in case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we might have to do a demo of the Roll and Go mixer. Yeah. All right, cool. Sorry about your hundred dollars, but that's cool. Ah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I equate everything to a pedal purchase now. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I could, I could get a pedal for that. <laughs> Did it, well, I will say it was between this rolling go mixer and the uh, the uh, what did you just get recently? The um, TC Electronic Octave. Uh, sub oh, sub and up. Yeah, sub Sold and up. That. The, the, <laughs> did you really? Oh gosh, dude. <laughs> I just did you not? I couldn't, you're not that was, guy, though. It was a cool. I know. Well, I you're know. not that I, guy. I thought though. I might be, and I'm no. not. I thought no, I might be. You're not that. I I seen you. I seen that you bought it, and I was like, this won't last. <laughs> yeah, I was it like, didn't. He needs to sell it to me. <laughs> I sold it right away. Yeah. But hey, it was cool. It's a great pedal. I'm not. I didn't say I sold it because it was crap. Yeah. I JJ, you've got experience with the sub and up, right? Um, I haven't played that one actually. No. Holy no. moly. Oh, no. Nope. Sounds like we need a demo. Oh, that's a demo coming. Shouldn't have sold it. Yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't have sent it to <laughs> you, it. right? Yeah, well, I never really got in, in touch with, with TC Electronic and all of the products that I demoed, demoed from TC Electronic. I did the Ditto Looper and stuff like that. Uh -huh. uh, it was mostly stuff that I just, you know, like bought myself. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah. we're going to peel the onion for sure now. <laughs> uh, that's a, so if, if anybody doesn't know what that means, if you're like, I don't know, really young, you know, like, what's, what's peeling the onion? Yeah, can you explain? Uh, peeling the onion. An onion has many, many layers, but they're not necessarily visible from the outside. Uh, the transparency of an onion it gives you the idea that this is somewhat complicated, but is it? Okay. Um, Initially what I thought it was. That's heavy yes. peewee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I believe you got that from Shrek. I, <laughs> I, think he, I think he said something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, now that you mention it. <laughs> or John Lennon, gonna, one of the two. <laughs> uh, JJ, what's going yeah. on in your guitar world this week? Um, well, I just got a new guitar um, last week. Yeah, last week I went in because I changed um, the pickups on my Trust the um, Telecaster. Change those those two tone riders. Don't know if you're familiar with those, but they're actually pretty sweet sounding tele pickups. Not too expensive, like eighty five bucks or something. Yeah. And uh, there was this terrible hum in the Telecaster, so I took it to um, to the builder, to um, Albert Dynam, who's uh, very close to me. And I ended up going with a new switch on that Telecaster, which was the problem, and a new um, Esquire. So I'm pretty happy with that. So, um, yeah, that's a Kaufman's 
55 Esquire with a Seymour Duncan little 59 in the bridge. And it's candy apple red, which is a color I hate, but fortunately <laughs> for me, uh, Albert's colorblind, so it kind of looks a little more more like, you know, like dark red. So really yeah. pretty guitar. Yeah. And um, we're recording uh, an album with the legendary Orchestra of Love, which is my uh, three-piece band, three-piece rock and roll band. So I um, spent some time in the studio doing some, doing some vocal overdubs and um, ready to mix it all up. And then, um, you play the hurdy-gurdy so, on that, right? Sorry? You play the hurdy-gurdy on that, right? The hurdy-gurdy, yes. yes that's <laughs> a, that and the um, uh, harpsichord as with, well. With a wah pedal, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and tons of tons of shimmer reverb. Nice. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm always curious. Um, I, I've been to Europe a few times, and, and I always try to hit a couple of stores. What, what's the, uh, I, I mean, to, to find good gear overseas like that, I mean, is it is it abundant, or is it uh, you have to, you know, look far and wide yeah well there are a, a couple of uh a couple of good stores i reckon uh but but mostly it's all been you know like swallowed by the big dinosaur online shops like yeah. um like key music everything's is key is either key music or back shop uh, i guess which is fine you know for pedals and and amplifiers if you know what what you want and to order it online but there's there's just a handful of good shops in the part of the Netherlands where I live. And one of them is uh, Kaufman's guitar store in um, Alphen on the Rhine. That's, that's like your typical. Bless you. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, your, that's, your, <laughs> that, that's your typical living room kind of guitar store. And he builds, oh, cool. he builds instruments himself as well. And just, you know, like really, really cozy place. And there's one called Max guitar. It's also not too far away. And they have a lot, a lot of knowledge, lots of knowledgeable people uh but, but with the bigger stores you know not so much really don't know what they're talking about most of the time yeah that's pretty comparable i think here to, in the states mm -hmm. and uh yeah we you know we're we're fortunate here in columbus we've got a couple of you know smaller shops with knowledgeable people get cool things in so that's you know that that's where i tend to shop if i'm if i'm going around yeah interesting thanks tony that was just my 25 cents. Yeah. No, you know, you just said something, JJ, that made me think of something really awesome that I haven't been to or seen yet, which um, I there was a there was a place um, that we used to play in Orange County, and it was um, it was a, a an Asian noodle restaurant at one point, <laughs> but it was converted from a house. So it was really weird. Right. It was still a house. It was very much a house. And you could have multiple bands play there at night in different rooms, not not colliding with each other. But the idea of of an old house that is a guitar shop to where, you know, the hard thing about going to a bigger guitar shop is that you're like, oh, man, I really want to grab that guitar. But, I mean, pretty much it doesn't matter who you are. It, from everybody that I've heard, it is... It is a very self-conscious thing to do to say, okay, cool, I'm just going to sit in the middle of the shop and play some guitar. Um, that's true. Yeah, that's true. It's a weird phenomenon. But the idea of being able to, like, take one and then actually go sit somewhere, you know, or maybe by yourself and just in a different room and, and, and actually explore that guitar seems like a really great thing. Yeah, that, that is something similar to what they have... Uh in the Hague at, at Max Guitar Store, uh, which is, uh, well, it's, it's not a terribly big guitar store, but they have these little, um, they have these little rooms. Uh, so it's, 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 picture it like, there's like a big center square where you have guitars and amps. Mm -hmm. And then, then, then around the, the outer edge are four or five uh, different rooms, which are, I guess they're, they're themed rooms or something that have like, really high-end acoustic room. They have, like, Gibson-type guitars in another one. They have a vintage amp room. Yeah. Uh, they have a Fender Custom Shops in, in one of those rooms. They're all, in, you know, they're glass rooms. You can close the door and just sit on That's nice cool. Chesterfield cu couches and check out guitars one by one, compare, and, you know, like, grab an amp that you like and drag it into the room and just 
you know, half coffee and stuff like that. It's yeah. a great shopping experience. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It, There's a great a, concept. Yeah. If you go to a big box, it's sort of like it's the equivalent of going to a to buy a car and then sitting in it and just going, rawr, rawr. <laughs> yep, this one, this, this should work fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great analogy yeah, i mean that's what it's like I like that yeah you're right and it's always kind of un it's very uncomfortable yeah sometimes yeah i mean there's there's there are always some showboats there but yeah uh, speaking of showboats and being uncomfortable tony what's going on in your guitar week i'm very <laughs> uncomfortable and showboaty <laughs> <laughs> well um for the last couple of weeks i have uh had a hankering to put together an sg why aren't you announcing baseball by the way for the last couple of weeks, I've been announcing me. <laughs> you know, I, I'm still I, stuck I, I on that Patreon uh, If this pick card doesn't work out, maybe I'll, <laughs> I'll pursue that. Okay, so sorry so, for the interruption. So anyhow, so I've had a hankering to put together a uh, Project SG. Oh. I've, I've, I've had SGs in and out of my collection mm -hmm. uh, over the years, but uh, I don't currently have one. Mm -hmm. And I always have pickups and parts and things that, you know, if I, if I buy a husk, I can usually pop one back together. So I found a couple of really good candidates um, on the bay we call E. And... Um, <laughs> eBay. <laughs> it's okay. Well, they're not going to... Oh, they don't have to worry about it. <laughs> okay. And I also checked out Reverb because uh, there's always some good candidates on there too. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, but... Um, as I was going down the rabbit hole, I stumbled on a very cool mislabeled uh, 50s arch top mm. that was in, um, it's, it's in okay form. I can put it back together, but I'm hoping that I can win that one on auction. And uh, I may just forego the SG just for this. Yeah. But I'm, 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 I, I can't divulge too much more information lest someone jump on it. <laughs> okay. Well, when does this thing end? Uh, by next week's episode, I will have an answer for you. Okay. All right. Good. But that's what I've So I've been doing a bunch of research on this particular brand. And um, it turns out it's, it's pretty cool. Okay. More details to come. All right. Tony's such a professional, leaving teasers. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Tune in next week. To yeah. See what and then Tony he comes. Does. He comes back in next week sobbing because he didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid one dollar. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, what's been going on in your world? Uh, well, I spent a um, better part of time. I'm I'm in that transition of I think I need a bigger pedal board, and I've been exploring mini pedals, mini like mini waz. I'm kind of going back and forth between, you know, a, a mini. Uh, a mini crybaby, a mini Morley. Have you tried? Morley has a volume on it too, but it's not as many. Have you tried the mini Dunlop crybaby? No. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. And there's. You should check out the uh, the Moor. What is it called? The Water or something? That's a mini wah with um little feet that you can you yeah. know like fold out so it's it actually metal, gets right? a bigger. Uh, seen yeah, that one. yeah, that's metal. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be a really great pedal. Yeah, there's. I'm so I'm right in the kind of in the middle of that. There was a hot tone one that I was checking out um, that sounds like it has everything, but I'm leery because I've also heard that the builds are kind of questionable on that. So, but it's cool. It's orange. I like that. Uh, so yeah, I'm just kind of been in like deep dive into: Do I want a volume pedal and a wah pedal? Do I want a volume wah on one? Do we, like, what do I want? And is that going to make me get a bigger board? How many pedals you got right now? Like on I don't know. Board? On a, you know well, it's, kind of, it's rotating because it was. Rotating. I was also rotating out of two different bands. So like, what board do you have? Uh, it's a pedal train Metro Twenty. Okay. Yeah. So, but I f I also have the One Spot Pro uh, Seven. Yeah. Which is a, it's a pretty big box. Yeah. Uh, and it's so if you have a, a medium sized pedal board, it's great. If you have a mini pedal board, it's it works great, but they're coming out with the, the super CS6. slim one that goes underneath, which yep. I'm pretty much gonna have to yeah, get. Yeah, that's the uh, CS6. Yeah, I've seen that. I was like, oh, yeah, that's what I'm I need have to for nab my that. nano or not my nano. Maybe we can I got get the a, Metro 24 too. Maybe we can get a bulk deal, dude. Maybe we can. Yeah, I'll take one. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should have those guys from True Tone on and see. It. Oh wait, we did. Oh, we did. That's right. <laughs> that snap. Call back. Where's yeah. Zach? Zach. Yeah. If you're so, anyways, listening. I'm in the I'm in that kind of you know play world right now of of doing that and um 
exploring new sounds with a new band. So what's what size shoe do you wear? I'm twelve and a half. You're twelve and a half. Yeah. And, and half. you want to go with a mini? I have a. Did we? Do you not hear the conversation about the board that I have? <laughs> I understand the board. <laughs> if I had a, if I had a, a medium size kind of full size ish board, yeah. you know, then no, I, I meant the pedal. Yeah, the, the, then I the would probably pedal. then I might go with a bigger Dude, pedal, I've, like I've the Ernie Ball P or something. I've had the PT two, and I've had I have the PT two, I have the PT one, and then I have the Metro twenty four. Yeah. And I always find myself like throwing pedals on that I don't ever use. Yeah. So I'm like the bigger the bigger the pedal board I have, the more I just have yeah. pedals I don't use. I think if you I know? can get that that new one spot six that's coming out, put yeah. it underneath the board, exactly. get a mini uh wah and or mini like either the Morley or the Dunlop, yeah. I'll be okay and I'll okay. be fine. Because I don't have I'm not I'm not doing the the Troy Van Leeuwen yeah. <laughs> set up. I'm I'm you know, I'm a little bit more in the Josh <laughs> realm when it comes to that <laughs> yeah. as far as the uh, amount of, of pedals and stuff. But, you know, uh, anyhow, moving on, blah, blah. Let's talk about me some more, shall we? <laughs> um, Enough about me. Yeah. What do you think about me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I just want to mention the gear swap, the Alchemy Audio gear swap at Fort Knox Studios on October 15th in Chicago. I know that is super, super, super regional, but we're going to be there and... It's turning out to be a pretty rad lineup. Uh, there's a lot of, of um, good action that we keep getting reported on this. So I'm excited. If you are anywhere near that area, please come out and say hello to us. We'd love to meet you, talk with you. Um, we've got several past guests going to be on as well, including uh, Jeff Schroeder of Smashing Pumpkins, who's, gonna, who's going to be there. And uh, Chase from Chasing Vintage is going to be there. Johnny from Alchemy is going to be there. Obviously, because he's doing. It. <laughs> yeah, but, um, he has to be. There. Yeah. Anyways, so that's fun. And that's coming up. More when excited. is that? Uh, October fifteenth. Oh. Yeah. In the Windy City. In the Windy City, at Fort Knox Studios. Okay, moving on. Um, oh, I forgot to say. One, two, one, two, three. Four on the floor. Okay, JJ is ready to go with his four on the floor. Go, JJ. Okay. So the first pedal. Uh, that I chose um, is the um, Earthquake Devices Speaker Cranker, uh, which is a single knob overdrive pedal from, I'm sure you guys know, Earthquake, uh, Akron, mm -hmm. Ohio. Beautiful Akron, uh, Ohio. Yes, yeah, uh, single knob overdrive pe pedal, um, so no separate gain volume and tone controls. But it, the cool thing about that pedal, I think, in a live situation is it, Basically, it always sounds good, no matter how you set it. If you set it all the way counterclockwise, it's just going to give you a little bit more hair, a um, little bit more gain. Uh, but it doesn't overly increase your uh, your total volume as soon as you start increasing that uh, that gain dial, and it automatically, um, you know, adds the tone settings to match with that. So it sounds good in every setting. It's great to tweak on the fly and sounds good with a number of different uh, number of different rigs, which is also pretty important because, you know, pedals themselves, they don't produce sound. It's, it's just a matter of what you put into them and where you're going into. So I definitely um, recommend the Speaker Cranker, the version 2, by uh, Earthquake Devices. So uh, as opposed to the version 1, this has got uh, top mount jacks. It's also very convenient for mounting it on a pedal board. Very nice. So yeah, that's number one. Do you uh, with the uh, speaker cranker? Are you running that like uh, with like as far as like other drive pedals and stuff? Like, are you running that first into the drive pedals or after? Like, uh, well, um, uh, you could uh, you could probably best place it at the end of, the the, end. of a series of um, third pedals, I suppose, because um, if you want to boost. Certain things, it's best to do it before hitting the speaker cranker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you? But it's a great, pe great pedal into a clean amplifier, but it, it doesn't really boost the front end of a of a hot tube amp yeah. uh, as much because you know it, there, there's not a lot of headroom in the pedal. It just stays pretty much stays a unity gain throughout the range, which I think is very convenient. It's kind of like having you know, like a second channel on an amplifier uh, without the the volume differences. It saves a lot of hassle. On okay. stage, okay. That's, that's pretty good. So it just adds a little more hair as you go. Uh, oh yeah, it's got quite a bit of gain. It's yeah. got quite quite a bit of gain on uh, on its own. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
Oh, and the, the knob is labeled more. Now, now, what more could you want from a pedal? <laughs> I like that. You I like know, that. like a big chunk of yellow metal with a knob on it. It just says more. That knob that says more. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Who wouldn't want to? Who wouldn't want to stomp on that? Uh, I, I know. Um, I know. I know. I will. Yeah. So um, next pedal, I guess. Uh, one that I've grown really fond of uh, is the Eventide H9 uh, processor, um, which is, uh, of course, Eventide have been around for decades. I mean, Zap, I used to play, you know, the Eventide harmonizer and stuff like that. And then um, a number of years ago, they came out with the Factor series of pedals. So you had the Space Factor. I think they're still around. Space yep. Factor, mm -hmm. Time Factor, Pitch Factor. Uh, very complicated pedals to use, and I'm just a simple guy. So uh, I got the H9, uh, which has all of the uh, algorithms that are actually in the Factor series of pedals all been built into it, if you get the, uh, the Max version, which has all of the algorithms, uh, plus um, a number of algorithms that are all its own. So it can do uh, reverbs, delays, uh, modulations. Uh, it's even got a dry section, which is... Not my favorite, but there is a really cool Casio kind of fuzz in there that I used on the uh, on the album. Um, but it's got really, really brilliant um, time-based effects that I use it for in the studio mostly. I don't use it live. Um, Why not? And it's pretty pretty easy to pretty easy to operate. Why not? Um, because uh, I feel when I'm playing live, uh, I also sing leads. Uh, I'm the only guitar player in a three-piece band. Oh yeah, okay. So I, I, I you know, this. I try to keep. Um, <laughs> I'm <laughs> I in try the same boat. <laughs> my pedal board, my pedal board is clean as possible, and I don't want to worry about am I, am I in the on the right patch before hitting uh, hitting the foot switch, you know, and stuff like that. So I keep things nice and simple. So uh, live. Yeah. So as far as like a live aspect, are you throwing delays on your pedal? And like the modulation effects? Yeah. Well, well the okay. cool thing about the H9 is yeah. it comes loaded with 99 presets, which, okay. which show you the crazier sides of the unit yeah. uh, and what the unit's capable of. But you can actually just lose all of those presets and only store, you know, like four or five or ten, whatever you want, uh, patches on it. So those will be the only ones that you can uh, that you can choose from from and, and, and toggle between in a live situation, which is very convenient. So you, don't end up on patch number 46, whereas you're supposed to be playing patch number 33. So I it could be very useful. I did psych rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it can be very convenient to use live. I've tried it, but it's much of a distraction. Yeah. So uh, as far as like to get all of that. A, from like a preset aspect, um, how many presets do you find yourself like saving? Uh, on this, this, unit? this is something I'm very curious about because, you know, like we've, there's a bunch of pedals out there now that have, you know, 200 banks, 100 banks. Yeah, that's you know. crazy. That's yeah, crazy. it's just a crazy amount yeah. of banks. But I'm I'm guessing about four or five. If I'm talking about a live show, okay, I would probably and if if I were to use the H9 live, I'd probably just set up, you know, like a good generic delay um, yeah. in the first slot. Uh, get your spring reverb in the second. Uh, there is um, some tremolo on a couple of songs, so that would be the third. And um, well, I I did use one of the arpeggiator effects on one of the um, one of the tracks on the album, uh, so it probably you know like store that in the fourth slot and maybe that Casio fuzz, which is just too cool. Uh, five, I guess, just a handful of patches. Okay. Yeah, otherwise you just get lost in all of the possibilities. Yeah, because that's something I find, uh, like, a lot of people, because like, I've I've had, like, you know, the Mobius and a couple other, like, larger effects. Yeah. And Ooh. I bought it because I'm like, oh, man, this thing has so many crazy effects, uh, like, and I'll, and it has presets, so I'll be able to save these. But then when I'm playing live, I only find myself visiting about four to five presets. Like, you know, like yeah, you absolutely. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But in a studio situation, when you're overdubbing guitars and stuff like that, it's really cool to just sit around, uh, you know, use the, uh, use the app on your smartphone to, to look up a certain type of reverb, tweak it, yeah. And you do, you know, do some extra guitar parts and stuff like that. And you basically have everything you could ever need in terms of effects uh, just in a single box, which is great, I think. Nice. Are, are you using an iPad or iPhone to, to control it or 
Is that just for... Yeah, yeah, yeah you like, can. Yeah. You can uh, hook it up via Bluetooth. Yeah. So there's an app that runs on smartphones and tablets, uh, which gives you uh, real-time control of all of the uh, effects parameters. Uh, but you can... Uh, let me see. Yeah, you can... On the fly, you could tweak three parameters per effect. Right. Yeah, there's little soft soft touch buttons on there, um, labeled X, Y, and Z. And then when you're dealing with a delay, X would be the time, and Y would be the uh, the repeats, and and so on. Yeah. So it's pretty easy to use, but uh, for me, it's just too complicated. Yeah. To use it to use it live. Okay, yeah. I was. I thank you for following up on that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right. What do you got for number three? Number three. Um, it's not something that you would typically put on the floor. I don't know if that counts, but I've grown pretty fond of the um, new neighbor iconoclast. Uh, new neighbor. Uh, we know new, new neighbor or Neunaber, as, as they would say in Germany or the Netherlands, I guess. Uh, they make the uh, the wet reverb and the seraphim uh, shimmer reverb. The iconoclast is um, a cabinet emulator uh, in a pedal format, um, which takes a line level signal from your amp's effects loop, um, or straight from a distortion box or an amp in a box type pedal. And then you can just go straight into the front of house with that uh, or into your recording oh, equipment. So that's a really interesting piece of gear, and it sounds um, amazing. I've used it on a lot of guitar tracks uh, on my YouTube channel, uh, but also when recording with my band, uh, just going straight in for the overdubs from the, uh, the Amps FX loop uh, into the Iconoclast straight into the board, and it sounds phenomenal. So, um, yeah, it's got a um, well, three-band kind of like a parametric EQ, but when you start shelving the high end and stuff like that, it actually sounds like you're moving the mic, you know, like from a center position to off center, um, on or off axis and stuff like that. So, um, and the bass control reacts like going from a, a 112 cap to a four by 12 cap and everything in between. So wow. it's a really cool unit, really cool unit. Uh, that sounds phenomenal, um, much better than some of the other, um, cap sims that I, that i've tried the only downside with that is um uh, it doesn't have a load box you cannot go from a speaker out from an amplifier straight into the um into the iconoclast so that's kind of a drag um so no built-in load box like the who notes torpedo uh but if you're looking for something that's easy to use uh and sounds phenomenal definitely check out the new neighbor iconoclast that's uh that sounds like a pretty rad pedal, actually. Oh, yeah, I'm it is. I'm not familiar with that one. Uh, yeah, you also. should definitely check it out. There's going to be a demo uh, on my channel. I'm still wrapping that up, uh, doing some more editing, and should be up uh, somewhere this week. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I, I actually tried it with uh, uh, the new ZVEX 59 sound, which is basically like the box of rock, So it's um, which is a, a Plexi Marshall in a box type of pedal, but the 59 sound emulates the sound of a 59 bassman. And it's got the uh, the boost built right in as well. And you will hear in that video when I go from the 59 sound straight into the Iconoclast, straight into the interface, sounds terrific. Sounds really, really great. Awesome. Yeah. Looking forward so, to that. Number four. You guys ready for number four? Bring it on. Uh, yeah, and this is one that I really had to think about for a very long time. Uh, if you... Let me see. Uh, I'm still torn between two choices. Yeah, I'm guessing uh, that will be the um, an older pedal. <laughs> uh, the Keeley Java Boost. The Keeley Java, Java Boost. Boost. Oh, yeah. Yeah, All absolutely. Right. And I'll tell you why. Um, I never really got into uh, boost pedals or treble boosters until a couple of months ago. And the reason for that was that I'm, I have this Fender Bass Breaker 007 amplifier that I am, a combo amp that I use at home, which is a really cool little tube amp. It's seven watts with virtually no clean headroom, uh, but it sounds really great. And that actually has it a treble like Tony, boost. actually. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that amplifier has a, a little treble boost switch built in. 
uh, that gives you more gain. So I started, you know, like uh, doing some research on travel boosters and who was actually using the, the Dallas Range Master. And I figured out that the travel boost in the 007 amp sounds nothing like like a Range Master or something like that. Uh, but the Java Boost does. And the cool thing with travel boosters is we always, most of us feel no need whatsoever to boost the highs in our signal because why would you want to go ahead and do that? But the thing is, we're actually talking about high mids. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you boost those frequencies, and it's going to have a dramatic effect on the uh, on the gain structure of the amp you're going into. And that's one of the things that the Java Boost does really, really well. Um, uh, plus, it's also got a three-way toggle switch that can take you from regular, like, range master kind of treble boost mm -hmm. uh, to uh, mid boost uh, and flat, so full range, uh, full range boost. It's a great little pedal. It's been around forever. Uh, but I kind of fell in love with it. I, I never am had so one. excited yeah. about this right now. I think I've been lacking a little bit of mid boost. You know, I've been trying to use an EQ to give to do my mid boost. Um, so I was actually going to try to build a mid boost. I was going to talk to Mike because I have a regular boost kit at home that I was going to do. I'm like, what do I need to do to just make this a mid boost, not just a full volume boost? Can I adjust that? Uh, then I had to sign contracts and everything with Mike, and I was like, oh, forget that. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I kid, I kid. Um, but so in Logic, when I'm playing through, my favorite pedal in all the pedal boards for the guitar is the treble boost. Every single every single time I'm plugging in and playing with that, I'm I'm like, that's the one that sounds the best. Like it makes my I know what, right. What can yeah. I have that in real life? Somehow it translates to it, it's still in my head, and I've you know I, I know about you're not technically actually boosting just the treble, but it hasn't. I haven't made the real life jump con connection into real life, and I think you, maybe you might have just done that for me. I like this. <laughs> I'm gonna research cool. it yeah. and get one. I want to yeah. talk about the 007. Is that that uh, what what output tube do you have in that? That's a, that's an EL84. EL84. That's yeah, a, it single EL84. It sounds very. It, it sounds similar. I have a, a Fuchs Lucky Seven, which you can throw a 84 or a, a 34 or a uh, 6L6 in. I have a 6L6 in it right now, and it's supposedly it's seven watts. Uh, it sounds like a hundred, but six L five, oh, yeah. six L six, whatever works. <laughs> oh, you amateurs! <laughs> <laughs> so that that's cool. I, I love those little amps like that because they just. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you, what you say about headroom is true. I mean, this one, you know, it's it's like full on Marshall from you know two and up. Yeah. On volume, but uh, but it's it's a really great low powered amp. Yeah, that Fender bass breaker line is, I like that a lot. I I know it it's sleek. been very yeah. polarizing for a lot of the guitar community. Mm -hmm. I feel like, but I I dig it. We were just talking about. Uh, I was talking with a friend of mine who is has in Rain Man knowledge of of amps and and speakers and everything. And we were talking about the the irony of Fender had to come out and say we've got a new amp. And it kind of sounds like a Marshall, which is ironic because it actually sounds more like an early uh, concert basement. or a basement, or like a 59 basement, which is what the Marshalls were based on. Yep. But they can, oh, yeah. you know, it's like this this crazy, like, <laughs> yeah. wait a it's minute. It's like a par <laughs> in of amplifiers. Yeah. <laughs> they couldn't come out and say, hey, this sounds just like a 59 basement because, you know, that's that amp is geared to a younger audience and the younger audience is be like, I don't know what that is. Buzzwords. Yep. You know, but I know, I know what a Marshall sounds like. Oh, crazy marketers. <laughs> yeah. And Enigma. Well, the cool thing about the, about the bass breaker range, I reckon is that all of the models are, are just so different. They're not just, you know, like bigger versions of the, of the one below it. Yeah. But the, I actually prefer to the 007 over to 15. Uh, sound wise, mm. there's just something about that, you know, like little 10 inch speaker, uh, the amp being only seven watts, so reduced headroom. Mm -hmm. um, so um, and it's easier to, to drive the power amp into compression. I actually use it in the band a lot, the, the uh, head version, 
just going into a Celestian Vintage 30 cab, mm -hmm. and it's it sounds like 100 watts. Yeah, and it's very, very responsive to, you know, like pick attack, pickups, uh, volume settings on the guitar and stuff like that. Just dime it, roll off most of the bass end, and it sounds like a dream. It's, that great sounds like amp. an awesome amp to do, uh, like a, a dual a dual amp setting in, in, you know, in a live situation, you know, yeah. an AB. Wet, wet dry or something. I like that. My mind's going crazy right now. Man, I love this. You're giving me good, good things to think about. All right. Thank you for your four on the floor and all the extra stuff that we've chewed up time with. Um, it has been cool. fantastic. But thank you. the main reason that we're talking to you is to talk about your, your contribution to our guitar world, um, which, is, which is a great one. The, your, metal, your trophy is on the way. Um, Thank you. <laughs> so, again, for those who – I'm going to do a little setup here for, for JJ, and then he's going to probably jump in and correct a lot of what I say. But uh, we know him as a very prominent figure in the YouTube world uh, for guitar demo review. Um, and, uh, and when I say guitar demo review, I just mean guitar gear music review. Obviously does an awful lot of pedals. Uh, amps, guitars, you know, all that business. Um, he is the, the way that he does it. I mean, we mentioned before is very, very approachable. I found that his, you know, the, 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 the his, you're, you're on the line. So I'm going to say your <laughs> JJ, your, your mix of being there in a, in a, in a, in a personal way. I feel like I'm sitting in that in your room with you. Um, yeah, that's the idea, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it it, it works. Um, you know, and everybody's got their own angle. I know that there, are, you know, some demo guys is like, I it's it's like very voyeuristic. Some I am maybe too close to the action. Um, you know, there's there's a there's a range, but I feel like I just like cruised over to your house on a Saturday, a sunny Saturday morning, and we're just checking out some gear. You know, you do a, such a good job of explaining what you're playing, why you're playing it, the cool things, the not cool things. Feel like it's a very honest and open approach to it. But so, thank you for tackling it that in that manner. Yeah, well, well, thanks for thanks for describing it that way because that's exactly the thing that I I would like to put across. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, you know, the reason I started out doing this. Um, this YouTube thing was about, I don't know, four years ago or something. Uh, I didn't have a band back then, um, but I did want to, you know, like create, create some sort of audience for myself. And I was, you know, like buying a lot of gear, selling a lot of gear, not really feeling very happy with my, with my guitar playing career or life at that point. And I was watching a lot of YouTube videos because, of course, if you want to, buy a pedal or an amp but the first thing you do is you check it out on youtube mm -hmm. and i was thinking oh my god there is just so much crap online <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know people people demoing pedals with socks that haven't seen a washing machine for six weeks <laughs> uh, you know so i i was like I, I, there has to be another way and and why don't i be you know like that guy demoing the pedals in a you know like concise way, so not just noodling away on the guitar, showing off licks and stuff like nobody's interested in that. And you're certainly never going to be the guy, uh, the, the next guitar god, because you know like there's like millions of people in the world playing the guitar, and nobody's going to sit around waiting for me to play my chops. Yeah, you know I could, but that's not the point. The point is, um, the guitar is something that that obviously that's a shared interest with with your audience and to me there's no other way than just simply being being open and honest and and meaningful of, about it you don't want to waste people's time you know mm -hmm. uh, so um and and i was fortunate enough that um first couple of demos i did i think the first one was actually the the digitech uh bad monkey overdrive uh, and then i actually borrowed a friend's big muff of course I I, I had owned a number of big muffs in the, the Green Russian when I was younger, and I demoed that. And apparently, um, 
Rupert, Bill Rupert, uh, the demo guy for Electroharmonics, who did the um, Effectology series of videos and, mm -hmm. and who does the all of the, you know, like the A product videos for Electroharmonics right. still. Um, he found out about my video, and that's when Larry DeMarco um, sent me an email and said, well, you know, we've been following your YouTube channel, and, you know, you're still growing, but we'd like to share your video on our blog and on our social media pages. Uh, how would you like that? And I was like, cool, absolutely. So I remember actually sitting on my, uh, sitting, uh, on my couch with my iPad in my hands, just checking out my YouTube channel, and I saw all of these views going from like a hundred, five hundred, six hundred, wow, seven hundred. Wow, that's awesome! And I was like, <laughs> "What the hell's going on here?" And apparently, they had already shared it on the, uh, oh. on the EHX uh, blog. So, um, and then Mike Matthews uh, himself, he started emailing me saying how much he liked the approach. Um, and I used to make cartoon drawings and stuff like that in the videos back then too, just to, you know, like uh, clarify certain, certain, certain ideas. Uh, and I remember in that Big Muff video, I borrowed a co. Uh, I knew that um, uh, the receptionist at the school that I worked at, she had two um, toy beavers standing on her desk. Don't ask me why. And I asked her, <laughs> "Can I buy, can I borrow these plush, these fluffy beavers? Because uh, I'm going to need them for a YouTube project." And she was like, "Sure, if you get them back by Monday, no problem." Tony's dying over I, here, by the way. Just yeah. <laughs> so I actually, and if, if you don't believe me, you should watch that uh, that Big Mouth Pie video that one of the first videos that I did. And these these um, these fluffy beavers are actually making an appearance throughout that entire video. And there's one point w at, at which I kick on the Big Muff right before kicking away the, the fluffy beavers. Now you're just filthy and vulgar. <laughs> so that was probably what grabbed their attention. And, uh, and then Mike Matthews said, well, hey, I, I really like what you're doing. And um, you know, you're not too talky, but you seem to be explain explaining things very easily. Easy to understand, you know, like simple, meaningful playing, a good production standard. How would you like me to uh, to send you one of our new pedals? And then he sent me the Super Ego. And uh, I did that and just started, you know, like uh, going on from there. So I played the NAM show in 2014, the winter NAM show in, um, in Anaheim, California for Electromonics. And, um, well, got to meet Mike in person. But, yeah, we, we used to email quite a bit. Um, I was also um, uh, involved in the uh, development of their tremolo pedal, the, um, the Super Pulsar, uh, because I'd been a, a big fan of the stereo uh, Pulsar before, and he, Mike set me up with John Pisani, who's their senior engineer, and we worked on a lot of the details of what wow. the Super Pulsar was going was gonna, to uh, end up looking like, and they sent me a couple of prototypes and stuff like that. So um, from then on, I, I did quite a few, well, not the, not the A line of uh, product videos that's always been Rupert, uh, but it, I did quite a number of um, projects for them. And, um, and even today, and I recorded uh, the Cockfight Plus and the Green Russian Big Muff mm -hmm. this week, and I'm working on the Hot Wax at the moment. Um, so that's that's been pretty cool. Um, and at some point, of course, I started demoing other brands because, you know, like I grabbed a lot of the attention of a lot of builders. So um, I guess Mike Matthews, he wanted me to be because John Skibbick was not uh, in the picture yet back then. Um, I guess he wanted me to be one of their main demo guys, but I preferred to do, you know, like other brands and stay objective and, you know, like approachable and and honest and all that kind of stuff. Right. So, uh, so I, I, I kind of declined that and went my own way. Um, got in touch with Earthquake or uh, JHS, Walrus Audio, um, Empress, Civex, um, you know, you know, like all the big brands. And mm -hmm. of course, I, um, I especially love doing, doing the lesser known brands. Um, I suppose I'm like. Um, Big Audio, I think, is really good. Uh, Red House Electronics, of course, Mike, got to give you credit. Yeah. I really, really loved your um, your Heat Wave, your tremolo pedal, which is Thank you. <laughs> terrific, absolutely great. Um, and I'm really looking forward to, 
demoing that new and improved mid drive, especially if it's going to have uh, what you said is going to feature. Oh, yeah, uh, I don't definitely. know if I can spoil that. Yeah, but um, yeah, really great job doing that. That's Red House so, Electronics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so that's basically my story, and you know, it's the same with everything you do in, on a creative level. If you if you do it for long enough and uh it's successful then you can you know like upgrade recording equipment mm -hmm. um and nowadays um because I, I i actually teach english at a secondary school in the netherlands i've done that for 15 years over 15 years and i've actually gone back to just teaching three days a week working on music uh for the rest of the week so that's that's quite a very fortunate that's position awesome. to be in yeah absolutely yeah, so that's my story, like in a nutshell. How long? I have a, how long does I have it take a lot. To do uh, one of those videos, by the way. I know how long it takes us to do this, and video is just is way more work. Can you give us an idea of like you know when somebody watches one of your videos, you know, and the weird thing it is about those is that you know media is disposable to to a certain degree, but yeah. people don't. I don't think people really understand how much work goes into one of those videos. Can you just give us an idea about how much time oh, sure. and all that stuff? Yeah. Yeah, well, obviously, I, I like to come prepared, right? There's there's too many videos. People, even, even like the big channels, uh, who, who start demoing pedals or amplifiers or guitars, and you can literally tell that they have never played the product before. Yeah. Not, they don't know what they're talking about. That's not what you want if you want a proper demo. You want you want it to hear, you know, like the thoughts on that pedal from somebody who's worked with it, you know. Mm -hmm. So the first step probably is is just to play around with it and, you know, take it out in the rehearsals or take it out on a gig, see how it behaves and with with different amplifiers and, and, and different guitars and in different contexts. So that's that's something well, you know, usually that takes about half an hour, an hour or some pedals take some more time to really get to know. And then the actual recording is, um, I guess it's usually just, if I take a regular Thursday, I will re record two videos tops in an entire day. And then there's post-production, depending on how many video, uh, video angles I'm using. Um, well, that's at least going to take two or three hours. Yeah. So oh, all in all, I thought it'd be way more than that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you you kind of develop certain routines, you know. True. True. Because you have when when I do post production and editing in Final Cut Pro, uh, I have certain presets for coloring. Sure. Uh, I, I know exactly how to set up the recording gear. Um, you know, so that that takes away a lot of. A lot of time once you get that right um and it does videos take are kind of continuous too right i mean, mean yeah like it, yeah because a lot of people a lot of people i mean me as far as you know because i was one that was trying to like you know look at demos as, as far as like to demo my product and uh what i noticed in uh jj's was i mean his was this like a straight cut like i mean it was just him it was continuous which is kind of hard to do because I've I've done my own demos, you know my my own demos like for my products, and I find myself messing up like like 15 seconds into the video and I'm like oh gosh I got to redo the video you know, but what I kind of enjoy about uh, JJ's is it's very like I don't know organic I guess this is the best way to put it it's yeah. just because it's, it has that natural feel because it's just a natural recording it's not 50 takes and then. You know, so uh, that's why I'm kind of like, oh, yeah, post-production should kind of be short, right? Right. Yeah, it, it is. It, yeah. it all depends on the kind of video that you're making. I remember uh, somewhere this year I was demoing the, um, the Nexi, uh, Nexi Industries, the solution pedal board. I don't know if you know, uh, if you've heard about that. Um, it's a, a pedal board that doesn't require any patch cables. You can simply just plug uh, the pedals onto the pedal board so they get power oh, yeah. I, and I they get patched in and yeah, stuff I like that. Demo, that one. And uh, they're actually built in the Netherlands so that that, that guy, 
Yerun Bakar, who's who's from around here. He actually stopped by my house a couple of times to talk about his product and, you know, like to, to lend me some of his stuff to demo. And then we decided on doing a project of three videos. That is, that's a project that's that's been edited a lot because that also has like the, um, a cartoon character version of me in it and doing all sorts of goofy, <laughs> goofy stuff with the, uh, with the lid that comes with the pedal board. Um, uh, so that requires a lot of editing, but with most, you know, like pedal demos, I think it's usually just best if you do it in a single take, because yeah. only then you get like a really natural flow of things and a really natural story. And I'm, I'm kind of used to presenting in that way because I also teach high school kids. So you, you get sort of a knack for attention span and stuff like that. I guess that's really important yeah. too. Yeah, for sure. Um, it, it also, I think, establishes a bit more trust because you you know that there aren't bits that um, are being edited out, like oh that doesn't sound good, or you know you can. You, there's some truth in just going. I'm going to plug in and play this. And, oh yeah, you know, and and this is what it sounds like. Um, so cool. That um, it 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 definitely it definitely shows. And it, for those who are listening, I would highly encourage seeking out his channel and and, and kind of spending some time. You'll learn a ton and um, and enjoy doing it at the same time. Yeah. Th there's one more thing I'd like to say. I was I was kind of thinking about what you just said. Um, I think a lot of artists when when you when you browse you know like web shops and youtube there's a certain mystique or that that is around certain pedals uh yes, and yes uh, uh, you know it, it's the same thing with the um boss collaboration with uh, with josh from jhs pedals they they now have that angry driver pedal which is a kind of a, a, a mix of the boss blues driver and i guess it's their angry charlie there's a certain mystique or a certain magic that is that is kind of marketed into that product, and I think the way uh, a lot of those demos are made, they kind of um, and they kind of enlarge that mystique or something. And there's just something about you know like a guy sitting on his couch saying, "Well, you know, I I've got the pedal and I'm going to plug it in and let you hear how it sounds," you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of demystifies the whole the whole marketing circus yeah. uh, in a way. Uh, hopefully that's that's the way it's coming across because, um, you know, pedals themselves, again, they don't have a sound of their own. You know, it's it's a matter of what you put into it and, and where you're going into, which amplifier. That's all. Yeah. It's simple physics. Yeah. No, those are... With a, with a lot of marketing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, obviously, you have access to um oh f before i forget this first of all if you if you're dealing with ehx at any point in the given future and you have influence if there's anything you can do to make them start using a different kind of knob i would personally greatly appreciate it <laughs> <laughs> those knobs <laughs> Just, I'll let I'll let them uh, know you said hi. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, well, well, it is a funny story um, about the Green Russian Big Muff, and that's one of those pedals that there's a great mystique around that sure. as well. You know. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure you guys remember the Russian Big Muffs um, from oh, yeah. from the 90s. You know, they were actually cheaper from where I am than the U.S. version. So I got a Russian Big Muff. Because it was like 20 euros cheaper than the U.S. version. Wow. And, uh, yeah, you know, and I never should have sold it. But I, I talked to Mike Matthews about reissuing the Green Russian uh, back in 2013, 2014. I reminded him later, well, you know what? My, and he was like, nah, it's not going to sell as much Junus as the U.S. version. So, uh, so I was like, oh, man, I just can't get him to can't get them to believe that there are actually a lot of players that actually prefer the the green russian over the u.s version the reason being the mid-range yeah of course uh but then he said no we're not gonna reissue it and i'll tell you why and this was at the nam show 2014 right before the the b9 came out and um he said but we're never gonna find that foot switch that we used on the original soft tech uh, big muff and they called it the gonker uh, and that was the reason uh, eventually, uh, speaking about knobs, 
uh, they could never find those Russian, you know, like military style knobs anymore to do a faithful recreation of that. So that it's just, you know, like it's just a very simple dilemma. Um, with these knobs, they're not going to reissue the green Russian the way it was because those knobs are not available anymore. And it's simply going to cost them too much money to reproduce them. And I'm guessing, you know, like the knobs on all like EHX pedals, they're probably the cheapest. You know, that's yeah. the reason why they have those knobs. When you yeah. ask, when I asked Mike Matthews in an interview that I did with him um, and said, well, which is your favorite pedal in the catalog? And then he says, well, you know, my favorite pedals are the ones that sell the most units. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's all of it's, the mystique there, the it, mystified, I guess. It is interesting <laughs> and maybe tragically, tragically uh, so uh, that, you know, you saw that as far as the Green Russian and certainly the, the, the regular people, I mean, hello, if, if, if you see a, a regular Big Muff uh, for sale for like 75 bucks, but uh, the Russian one is 250. What does that tell you? Mm -hmm. um, now, obviously, they probably missed the big window to jump through because then, uh, then you had um, Way Huge come out with the uh, the Russian pickle, and I was like, yeah. "Oh snap!" <laughs> yeah, um, and they beat them to it. I know. I mean, sheesh. <laughs> you know what would be wanted... really interesting? A demo with both of those would be great. Oh, yeah. I, I, I saw today that Reverb's actually working on that, Reverb.com. Um, but what would be a real steal is just just to go on Reverb or Craigslist and get a, a used nano bass big muff because that's basically the same pedal as the Green Russian. And um, they go for like 30, 40 bucks. Okay, so we're uh, all going to do that before we air this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's the only drive the price is, up. Um, with the bass big muff, there's a little switch that allows you to blend in the clean sound, but I'm guessing it's the same circuit. Wow. All right. That's Big good tip. to know. So it, talking about your, your, you know, your access and your landscape and all of the things that you are either being shucked your way um, or that you are desirous of trying things that you have seen fall by the wayside. Where did that thing go? <laughs> um, what's coming up? Let's talk about trends as far as your, you know, what you're doing. Uh, walk us through what you're seeing, you know, maybe, maybe right now. Uh, as far as trends in the, in the market, one thing that's for sure is that where 10 years ago, uh, I guess we were all after analog delays a lot, um, 10, 15 years ago. But, you know, like time-based effects like reverbs and del delays in the digital realm, they've become so good. Even the, the you know, the tape echoes mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, the, the, the Bucket Brigade style delays, they sound better digital and then they are analog. So that's that's probably obvious. Um, can you can I I'm going to just jump in real quick. Um, bucket Brigade is something is a, is a term that I think gets thrown a lot. Could, would you just explain for our listeners um, Bucket Brigade? Yeah, well, well, they're Bucket Brigade uh, are, are analog ICs that are that are used to uh, to create, you know, like echo or, or doubling. Yeah, in simple terms. Okay. And and sound wise, the uh, characteristic would be that uh, like a bunch of firemen, you know, like that are bucket brigading a bucket of water to the fire. But once it makes it to the fire, there's no more, not, much, not that much water left in the bucket mm -hmm. because it's been it's seen so many hands. Mm -hmm. It's the same with those I C. So the repeats on an echo, for example, you know they will get they will degrade in quality uh, the further you you get away from the original sound. Which is very desirable. Sounds very, very organic. That thank you for yeah. that. <laughs> okay. So and yeah, well, as far as trends are concerned, uh, another open door, I guess, is small tube amps. Like I said, the 007 people are finally um, coming to senses about using tube amps um, uh, in the correct way. You know, I was talking to somebody this week. Uh, a parent of a very young kid of 14 and 
she was um, she was at my work and um, she was a co-worker and she said well I'm, I'm going to get my son uh, a guitar amplifier because he's getting serious about guitar so we went to back shop and the guy said well he, he's got to have a tube amp and I'm like hold your horses why would you want to go and buy a tube amp yeah he says it's got to be at least 50 watts <laughs> Why on earth would you want to have a 50-watt tube amp if you're going to play in a school band, you know? So and then she said, well, I'd like to talk talk with you about what kind of amp I should get. So I made this uh, video um, answering that question, so talking about budget, uh, different types of amplifier, what kind of sound you want. That's great. Uh, and, and context as being the most important thing because, you know, Everybody can type. As far as I'm concerned, people on the uh, on the on the gear page and the Telecaster forum, which is great, by the way, uh, it could be any 13 year old copying whatever he read somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So some real world experience tells us that you will typically never uh, never need a hundred watt tube amp if you're you know like a a mere mortal such as ourselves right um uh, except for if you need a lot of clean headroom you know mm -hmm. so um what you're seeing is that people are getting more educated about tube amps uh, and realizing that getting a smaller tube amp in the studio can actually sound much bigger when you record it properly so um lots of small tube amps i guess we're going to be seeing and uh, what's what's a cool development is the um uh, also the sense of letting go of the original tube amplifiers, uh, and a good example is the Vox MV50, which are the uh, the mini heads. They they come in um, clean uh, AC30 style and rock style uh, versions. They're 50 watt Class D power amps, but with kind of like a new tube in the front end, which is like a mini vacuum tube, which responds very much like like a real tube amp would. Uh, but it's, you know, like very small, very light, mm -hmm. has all your regular ins and outs, like uh, uh, emulated output. Uh, you can hook it up to um, to, um, to a 4 by 12 or to a 1 by 8 little cab that they make and stuff like that. Very easily, easy to integrate into your home studio or, you know, bring to a friend's place and stuff like that. So, yeah, I guess we're going to be seeing more of that too. JJ, you just mentioned something that was... I just want to pull out, uh, you mentioned it was a class D amp. Would you yeah. kind of just explain that a little bit? Well, well, if you're talking about uh, a class D power amp, that's something you see a lot in basic amplification. So they're digital, they're digital power amps, which are, are very lightweight, but can produce a lot of volume without, you know, like being terribly heavy, like a tube power section, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to, um, Class A and Class A B. Uh, just to tag on to the different classes of amplifiers, uh, the Class A, Class A B, Class B, and Class C, they the amplifiers. It just depends on how you're running them, and those classes actually operate as in their linear range. And as for the Class D, it operates in the non-linear range. <clears throat> and so, what that means is, uh, like with the Class A amplifier you're actually only getting 50% um, out of your amplifier, and which is why they have to work so hard to output so much. Oh. Now, as with the Class D amplifier, those are actually being, it's almost actually, what it's doing is it's turning your AC signal into a DC signal, and then reconverting it back into an AC signal so that we can hear it. Interesting. And, um, and why it's doing that is because the, Amplifier is actually in a class D is being operated as a switch. So the signal is being cut off, cut on, on, off, on, right. off, digital, right? Right. And uh, like because, a noise gate almost. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I mean, this way, that's what it or is. Not. Like, or not. Well, <laughs> well, just, I mean, in the sense of like, it, it's, it's letting it in, it's not letting it in, it's letting it in, it's not yeah. letting it in. And it's happening. So, and then, and then what it's doing is it's being reconverted. But because you're because the amplifier is being turned off for a certain amount of time, yeah. and turned on. That's actually what that's doing is it's it create a, it's a better efficiency. So mm -hmm. with Class D amplifiers, you're getting ninety plus percent um, of efficiency, and uh, which to be able to do this switching. 
for the class D amplifier, you need another control to turn the switches on and off, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but as we enter into this more uh, digital arena where things are becoming easier to stack into, you know, a box, um, it's becoming more easier to create the class D amplifiers. And that's why you see a lot of people, um, a lot of power amplifiers now. Uh, like I recently just uh, bought a bunch of uh, uh, speakers, uh, powered speakers, you know, for my church. And uh, we got the EVs, the EX15Ps or whatever. But those are class D amplifiers. And what's sweet about that is you can get so much out of, you get, you get your bang for your buck. You know, mm -hmm. um, those app, those power speakers run, I mean, output so much, but they're not heating up. That's yeah. because they're getting max efficiency. So, uh, yeah, that's just a little. Yeah, cool. You, you learned all that working at Radio Shack? Uh, yeah. yeah, working at Radio Shack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah. One thing about Mike is he's wicked smart when it comes to this. Although, you know, if you look at him, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, go ahead, Mike. I don't know if that's a compliment or not. Ooh, that's a backhanded compliment. Yeah, that's a backhanded compliment. It's a punch and a smile and a hug. I, I keyed, I keyed, but you are super... Nerdy? Yeah. No, in a good way. Um, You know, super, super smart when it comes to that stuff. That's one of the things that impressed me most when I first interviewed you, Mike. Um, Way back when. Way back when. Yeah. Anyways... Tony, I mean, I mean, the, my experience with Class A amps um, is it, surprisingly, even though they're lower output in terms of wattage, uh, is they they tend to sound louder to me. And we'd find that in like in a Marshall or, or well, mostly like Voxes, Vox, Vox uh, amps, yeah. early, early Fenders. You know, okay. I mean, uh, and Marshalls too. Some of the uh, even with the L thirty fours. I'm not sure why the switch went over to AB uh, in, you know, probably fenders primarily are that now. Um, and, and surprisingly, even though, I, I mean, I've played a number of 5-watt, 7-watt, you know, even 15-watt amps, they always, a Class A amp always sounds louder to me. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I think, think like a Vox AC15, which is only 15 watts, but that doesn't really say that much. It's a terribly loud... You know, like rock and roll amplifier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like it's it's on 15 watts all the time yeah. as opposed to an AB, oh, yeah. which might, you know, fluctuate between 5 and Well, that's 10. an interesting thing because I think um, if you're if you're new to tube amplifiers or whatever and you, and you get yours home and, and all you, you know, you hear so much about, yeah, when you really, when you, you a, a tube amp sounds amazing when you, when you, give it the gas and then you know you can just start to hear the breakup well if you i mean unless you're on on a stage you you can't ever get that you're high. Not gonna get there. <laughs> yeah. um, you know certainly in your house you, you know i remember the first tube amp that i had i was running into that and i was like why i can only turn this up to like one and a half <laughs> absolutely and, yeah <laughs> and then you know it's sort of like <laughs> Tink, tink. Uh, Sounds like a, a Ferrari <laughs> that, that you're idling in traffic with, you know, to a certain degree. And I had a chance to try one out. That is a um, so new tube technology. So that's is that is that the one that has kind of like the it's it's based on uh, a, a fluorescent or phosphorus kind of uh, chip that emulates a tube. I wouldn't know. I'm no. I'm not an engineer, you know. But but it's marketed that way as being like a mini tube, as, for whatever that means. Yeah. Um. But I played the AC model into um, a 112 cab, and it sounded pretty damn convincing, man. Huh. The the way it uh, responds to you know like playing dynamics, uh, different pickups, guitar volume, tone settings. It actually responds, if you would do a blind test with a Vox AC15 at room level uh, and uh, and the MV50 AC model into a 112 cap, I don't think I would be able to tell the difference wow. uh, sound-wise. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But of course, it hasn't got, you know, like reverb and tremolo and stuff like that, and it's got limited control, uh, but it has tons of um, useful ins and outs and features. So it's easy to... 
easy to implement in your home studio or bring to a friend's place to to just jam or as a, a backup head in a live situation. Yeah. Plus, it doesn't yes, weigh but, 55 pounds. <laughs> it's really light. It's really light. Yeah. No, oh, that's neat. Almost like we are, we're, maybe we're going to have to do one of those ABs here yeah. before too long because the, the, those new Vox uh, that series are not terribly expensive, are they? I think they're about 200 bucks, 250. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. I, you know, the demo thing here is weird because I've been asked a lot, like, oh, you should do a demo on this, you should do a demo on that, and it's like opening the doors to the demo thing like this is already almost like a, a second full-time job <laughs> so i don't know that that's going to be happening in it and there's so many people doing it and doing it far better than i would have the time to actually put in to to do that well because i don't want to do things you know kind of half-assed and and just like oh this is good enough I, I try really hard not to do that. Um, so, JJ, as far as, uh, you know, maybe opportunity or, or things that, that we should maybe be thinking about or looking for uh, gear-wise, uh, what's what does the crystal ball say to you? Well, I can't tell the future, of course, but what you're... What I think is going to happen that products like the new neighbor iconoclast that I mentioned in the four on the floor, uh, which is the the cabinet simulator, mm -hmm. cabinet emu cabinet emulator, I think like um, small pedal boards or or all like our bigger pedal boards, but with no uh, physical amplifier, are probably going to be what we're going to be using in ten years time. So like the two nodes torpedo cab uh, coming from like amp in a box style pedals or, you know, like two preamps on the floor with cab sims uh, and no backline amps. Because it's crazy when, when you do a live show regular, like, regularly, regularly like I do, um, nine out of ten times the sound guy is going to ask you to turn down, right? We've all yeah. been there. <laughs> sure. So it's confusing. Uh, really, <laughs> that's that's the really first thing no they teach them in tech school. <laughs> turn down. <laughs> There's really no point in 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 lugging around big tube amps anymore, unless you're playing like small pubs, and they're just amplifying the vocals through a simple sound system, and you're you're rocking backline amps. Right. Um, you can you can pull it off then, but nine out of ten times. Uh, you could easily just, you know, like bring a 112 combo, 10 watts, 15 watts. Hell, I bring the um, the 007, the small gigs, and it's it's going to be mic'd up anyway. Yeah. You know, so and it sounds sounds terrific. So I'm guessing tube amps will never really go away. Not if um, not, not if it's up to me. Um, but you see a lot of pedal boards with the torpedo cab or something like the iconoclast on it as being the final stage in the pedal in the pedal chain and then going straight into the front of the house, uh, probably. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah. also probably going to take a lot of people like yourself and like other influencers to basically say, Hey, it's okay to the romance of a tube amp, um, to, to buffer that a little bit. Um, yes. Yeah, the romance and the mystique, you know? Right. Young kids reading on forums that they should play a Marshall Plexi. They don't know what the hell a Plexi sounds like. Yeah. Well, they've they've never hauled up, you know, like a four by twelve up or down the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're and they're and they're probably never going to. Yeah. yeah. Luck, lucky for them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And lucky for them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I yeah. you know I was talking with um, one of our new listeners on Facebook group, Gavin Downey from uh, New Zealand. And he has been, he just jumped in like feet first and has given up so much great information, has been very active on the group. And uh, I appreciate that, uh, Gavin. Um, but one thing that we were just talking about, because uh, we share a huge passion for um, The Clash and Jill Strummer and, and all that business, he was talking about getting a, he recently acquired a, a Roland JC120. And uh, because that's one of, you know, what he saw Joe playing. And, and I was researching those and I found that one of the big things with those, because they're big, loud, super, super, super clean, is that a lot of people are running those cab sims into it. 
So like getting an iconoclast, you can pick up a, one of those old like, super clean amps or even like an old PV 212, one, you know, beast. Those are so cheap, you know? Yeah, they're solid state. But, you know, if you can get over the romance of that and you can go like, hey, I not, I'm not one trying to lose the, the you know, the tube amp thing, but I'm just, I'm saying this is one of those alternatives that I can start to see maybe turning, you know, turning that, that tide or at least opening up the doors a little bit. Oh, yeah. You know, absolutely. running an iconoclast into a, a, a PV212, that you know, an older PV212 or something like that or, or, or an older Roland that, that you can pick up on Craigslist or or wherever your local gear swap is for nothing. You know, very cheap for what you're getting. You're getting a huge power source. Um, I can see the appeal of that to, to someone who maybe doesn't want to drop a lot of money on a, a single voiced tube amp. Yeah. Yeah. So you're talking about going from the iconoclast and then into the front end of that amp. That's, that's what he was. Well, yeah, the conversations um, that I was seeing were like cab sims running into JC 120. Right. Right. That's interesting, man. Yeah. Yeah. So you could definitely roll off a lot you're of just that. Using it as a power amp. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Anyways, we're going to move on to the "Would You Rather" segment of the show. Yeah, how's it, how's he do try it. That? Go ahead. It, <laughs> show me how. To, how does he? No, do you that? just try it. Would you rather? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know Grover what? was here. <laughs> yeah, what the heck? I don't know. You know. <laughs> Come on, just get, no. throw a little silkiness on it. I mean. Show me how he does you're, you're, it. You, 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 I haven't mastered the. I don't. Would practice. you rather? Okay, okay, okay. Try that. Would you rather? <laughs> oh, Jared, oh, where are boy. you? Uh, you oh, should have had him phone in on that. That's <laughs> why you play guitar. Goodness yeah. sakes! Oh wow! Thank God he knows about class D amplifiers. Uh, <laughs> Gee whiz. Keep it in the books. <laughs> Would okay. you rather? All right. So what is it this week? Mike, <laughs> so, now that we put you in a corner. What we have is, um, would you rather have a jazz master with polka dot or plaid? Yeah, paint scheme. Ooh, so you got you got a brand new a jazz master, but it only comes in polka dot or plaid. Tony. It, uh, what, what type of plaid? Is it like a, a, a tartan? Or yes, is let's a, say a tartan. A t we, if we, so we're talking about, yes, a tartan. I would go with the tartan because I think that's that would that would actually be a pretty cool finish. Uh, okay. I, I think that's where I'm going because the polka dot, yeah, you know, it's it's okay. Yeah, but definitely, yeah, the the plaid. There's something very Scottish about it. Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and if it's not Scottish, very, it's crap. Uh, okay. <laughs> How about JJ? Coconut or plaid? I would have no, to go with po coconut. Po po polka dot. <laughs> oh, polka dot. Oh, I thought uh, your, your choice is a jazz master with a polka dot finish. Uh, do you know what that is? Uh, does that translate? Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, sure. cool. Or a plaid finish. Yeah. So think, think. Uh, you know, buddy guy. Buddy uh, guy. That yeah, would be a good oh, example. Yeah. Or yeah. Uh, um, you know, the other guy, the little, the little guy that played with Ozzy. <laughs> Randy the Rose. Oh, the little guy. Ozzie. Yeah. What was his name? Randy Rhodes. <laughs> Randy Rhodes. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with coconut. What? No, polka dot. Pol polka oh, dot. Polka dot. Polka. I thought you said, thought you said a coconut. Sorry. <laughs> uh, polka dots. Oh, dear. Yeah, I'd still go with polka dots. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, very, very buddy guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sure. Yeah. Mike? Send it to, send it to me. <laughs> that, that jazz master. That would be cool. I'd probably have to go with polka dot. Uh, I'm a simple guy. I like simple designs, and I think polka dot kind of, yeah, polka dot kind of does that. What, what kind of would, would would you want? White dots on a black finish? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I like I want a white guitar with black polka dots, but I feel like that's been done so much. Yeah, that I'd have to go with something else. Maybe like off white. Uh, I mean, but that's matte. still in the same area, like a mat. Um, man, big, probably, huge, oversized. I mean, if, polka if I'm dots. already if I'm already doing polka dots, I might as well just continue the craziness. 
So I'd probably have like a pink shell pink or something like that uh-huh. with some like weird like the dots being maybe like a green like a like a 80s highlight oh, that would green be or something really like that. weird you know what i'm saying yeah, that would look but, like but, that would look like a pimento loaf but, i mean you already have <laughs> polka dots on your guitar isn't that weird enough <laughs> but then again it would. Yeah, but yeah. the other option is plaid that's hey <laughs> like what jj what what polka dot pattern what colors would you choose for your polka dot pattern um I would go for white on red, oh, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. yeah um, cool. See how he did that? That's see like how easy very, that was, Mike? That's jazzy. <laughs> like, a, like a toadstool or something. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going, cool. I'm going plaid for sure. I, I've always liked plaid. And ever since, my, ever since I discovered the Bay City Road. Uh, <laughs> I knew that was coming. Uh, but, uh, yeah, one of my favorite jackets was, was plaid. Actually... Um, we, we, we talked about that on a, on a past episode, um, with, about, about plaid stuff. But uh, anyways, I digress. I would definitely go for plaid for sure. hundred percent. I think that would look rad, rad and plaid. Rad and plaid. S-A-T-U-R-D-A-Y. Night. It's a Saturday morning, but that's close enough. Yeah. So anyways, (laughs) all right, we're going to wrap this up and let JJ get on with his real life all the way over there in the Netherlands. And JJ, we're so grateful that you spent your time with us. Thank you for being such a great guest and a no problem. Thanks for having me. Nice gentleman. Um, can you tell everybody where they can find you? Um, I mean, not specifically me. where they can come actually. <laughs> right. So I'm not going to have to give They're you a geographical you. location. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to look that up, man. Um, no, you can find me on YouTube. Of course, Just search for my name. That's JJ uh, Tanis. That's T-A-N-I-S or it's youtube.com forward slash JJ Tanis. You can find me on Instagram. That's JJ Tanis as well. And, uh, well, it's JJ Tanis music.com, by the way, if you want to get in touch. I also do Skype lessons. Or if you want to send me an email, you can just use that as a, you as teach a, people how to as use a springboard. Skype. No, I don't teach people how to use Skype, um, <laughs> but I, I teach guitar lessons. That, yeah. that must be very difficult. To, to, <laughs> have you gotten any students? Yeah. <laughs> how they get on Skype to learn Skype? Uh, what's... Oh, man. Sorry. Uh, that was terrible. So uh, awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, we need to just give a quick shout out to a few people. We want to thank our executive producers for their support in this podcast. Tom Brazen, Martin Cliff. David Wolfson, Matt Brammer, Carlos Mancha, and Pete Marshall. Thank you guys so much Thank for helping you. us out. It, it it means a ton to us, and I'm happy to read your names off. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you would like to become an executive producer or some other type of supporter, head on over to Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs to find out how. And Jared, we missed you, buddy. Subscribe! Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it for these knobs. Please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs. Visit our website at theguitarknobs.com for all of our past episodes, four on the floor blog, and other good stuff. You can connect with us on social too at our Facebook page and share your gear and stories on our Facebook group. Also, be sure to check out our Instagram at guitar knobs. Catch you next time.